Liquid Sims are here inside of C40 2025. Uh, I got the SEO in there in the first five seconds. Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron. And uh, Liquid Sims are here. 2025.3 has released and is the first iteration of the new Liquid system that Cinema 4D is introducing. And honestly, I'm impressed. I, I don't know. I kind of wanted to be disappointed a little bit because I wanted to make it an easier decision to kind of abandon Maxon and switch over to Unreal Engine. Um, but I'm going to hang on to it for a little bit more. Um, and we'll add some Liquid stuff into the Mind and Motion Masterclass as well because it is really cool and it's kind of great. So... I'm pleasantly surprised with how well it is, even in its early stages. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to set it up, how it works. But first, we're going to talk about how you can get your hands on a couple free scenes that are really good for understanding and reverse engineering how it works so that you can actually start building things and creating things very well. And nobody talks about it. I watched some of the Maxon training team and stuff, but with with um, Ellie and Noseman, and it's great, but there's nobody mentions just this really easy way to get these cool scenes because normally when Maxon introduces a new feature they add a new capsule right there's always like a project file or something so that's always the first thing I check I come in here I go to the asset browser I go to new capsules there's new vases things and stuff like that there's a new join spline which I'm interested in and but mainly that's it some new scratches which is good but that's pretty much it with some ArcViz stuff. Um, nothing about liquid, if I type in liquid, you can see there's no example scenes like there were with the particles and stuff like that. So let's talk about first and foremost, how to get your hands on those. And then we'll talk about pros and cons of the system and do a little example um, like that. And some things that I found out just in my first couple hours of dealing with this. So first things first, inside of C40, you open up a new scene. Underneath simulate, you'll see that it's yellow. Go ahead and drag that down. There are three new things, basically. There is a new liquid fill emitter, which is what you would use to like fill up an aquarium or a volume of water, like as a shape, and you'd want to fill it 100% with water. That's what the liquid fill emitter is going to be. Then you've got a modifier, which is the liquify modifier, which acts exactly like other modifiers like sticky or flock, except what it does is it adds liquid effects like viscosity, surface tension, and density into your particle system for your emitters which is great because you still get the same gpu particle system with all the modifiers and everything else is all going to work together but now you have attributes of liquid which is great and then lastly they added the liquid mesh which basically is like a hybrid between metaball and the volume builder than mesher um, it basically is just going to add a layer around your particles but it has some really nice features in it that help make it look better okay so first things first let's just go ahead and do a emitter and then we're going to go ahead and add a modifier liquify okay now basic breakdown of what the, how this works you have liquify being affected by your emitter so we've got our emitter here you know and you can see as it pops out it is falling down turn liquify off you know it's going to go out and it's just going to fly out because it doesn't have anything on it but once you put liquify on it you're going to get the attributes of the liquify which even though in here there's absolutely nothing about gravity it works gravity because the way this works is kind of interesting so the way to think about liquify is think about it exactly the same as pyro if you hit control d you'll see when you go to the simulations tab we have simulation pyro particles and now liquify and the cool thing is is that all three of these systems can collide and collaborate together um that also might be a little confusing to learn because they all kind of have their own thing so there's that but yes so this i like okay so like i was saying without liquify it flies straight with liquify on it falls down with gravity now this gravity is not controlled in these settings it is not controlled within your particle group it is not controlled within your emitter it is not controlled within your liquify okay <laughs> this is now part of a sim system so now we have to go back to control d and now we have the simulation system here which again no gravity so where is it well it's in your scene sim so now if we come in here turn the gravity off there and we hit play 
with liquify on, it's going to float out. So yes, you can do water in zero gravity, and you can see kind of how those are acting different already from just normal liquid. It looks like zero gravity water flying out, which is so cool, right? And we can come in here, and real quick, we can just mess with the viscosity, the density, all this stuff. Let's go ahead and just grab our emitter. Uh, we'll go with the emission. We'll crank it up to 1,000 real quick just so we can see this. And then we'll just crank up the... Uh, viscosity and the surface tension on this just so you can see kind of how it reacts when it comes out and you can see how it kind of gloops together and so now we have these really nice zero gravity water droplets flying around which is awesome right like that is cool it also looks like someone blowing through a stack of bubbles in a bubble bath I know it's a very specific example <laughs> I have little kids I don't know uh, yeah so so that is basically how that works. So in order to turn this into a mesh, we come in here and we add the liquid mesh. And when we do that, we get these attributes here and you can see it automatically includes our particle groups. So now we have these bubbles here, which is cool. But just like everything else inside of Cinema 4D and its dynamics, all of the default values are way too big to be practically useful. It's incredibly frustrating, right? Because let's say this is liquid, Obviously, in your head, you're like, oh, that's cool. You could make these cool, like, bubbles and stuff. Yes, bubbles, but not water droplets, really. Because check this out, right? Here's our water. All right, let's go ahead and be like, okay, let's just add in a glass here, like a beer mug. Cool. Load that in. Oh, my beer mug is this scale, while my model is this scale. Um, so, yeah, there's everything by default is set to huge. So, you always have to, like, scale up your beer mug and stuff, which, you know, obviously, if you're doing a bunch of physically accurate stuff, when you add in your glass materials and stuff that have a certain depth to them or whatever, it's going to change the way it looks, which is frustrating, but it can be adjusted and be fixed. But I just wish that by default, these were small enough to be like sizes that a lot of C4D stuff is used for. It's used for lotions. It's used for shoes. It's used for food commercials. Their scale is small. Make the particle system work small better. Okay. That's my side thing. Yes, you can lower the scale of this down. And again, Crank that up and then increase the, the amount of geometry smoothing or the normal smoothing is very helpful. Okay. Maybe not that high. 100 by 50. All right. So now we have some like droplets. We got more of a droplet kind of system going on. And obviously you can adjust the settings. And this is going to be kind of where a lot of these things are going to be like, oh, this is going to be a lot of trial and error, like figuring out what these values are and what these iterations need to be and stuff. And that is where having these example scenes will come into play and be very helpful for you. The only problem is with all these example scenes, again, they're huge. They are not to scale with real world size cups and stuff. There is an example scene with a cup where they take two different colors and mix them together and it blends perfectly except the cup is huge, so it's pretty useless. No, um, but, but yeah, I guess they don't want to give away too much for free. But yeah, so that's basically how that works, is this is the mesh attribute, and inside of that, you can see, you can turn on the geometry, the normals, all this stuff inside of there, just like Pyro, it has like this extra layer of exporting, and there you go. So inside of that is what you want, and again, making it three is going to be the, the ideal thing. So it's going to come out. It does run fast. We've even got liquid mesh. It's locking out like crazy blah, blah. right but we're smoothing it out way too much keep it smaller blah. but then we just lose all the detail so it's always this balancing act between the amount of particles the scale of the particles the scale of the geometry the size blah, 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 blah. and it just it becomes this balancing act it's frustrating uh, when you have to do with things that are small so let's talk about how to get our example scenes so inside of the liquify tab or really anywhere inside of c4d just right click something and go to show help Inside of show help, we want to type in liquid. Inside of liquid, there is an introduction to liquid sims, the liquid fill emitter, and liquids and liquid mesh. Okay, these are the four new things, as well as liquify, which is down here. Okay, so we've got this. So inside of here, you can actually see, like, it's capable of doing things like this. So we've got the illusion of buoyancy here going on. I'm curious how they did that, right? Uh, and then they've got particles turning into liquid like that. So then you can see by the end, that's how it turns into liquid. Really nice. Now, here's the cool thing, right? They've got all these particle examples here. Each one of these examples almost 
has something very valuable. Okay, this is a filling a pool. This is pouring onto something else. Very, very cool. Now, the cool thing I want to make sure that you guys know about is that a lot of these things are available to download. Okay, now there's nowhere in here that says download. If you search like download, you know, nothing pops up. We'll go back to the introduction to Liquid Sim. And if you look by the little video, there's no nothing here that says download anything. There's just a little tiny icon that has the C4D file scene on it. That is a download file. Clicking that will download that scene. So inside of here, we have access to all of these scenes, including this one down here, which I definitely want. Click. No. Um, click that one. Look at these. This is great. I love this. Super, super good. It all looks good. This is the one, right? This is two different colors mixing together and actually looking correct. They actually blend and everything. So download that, open that file. And now you can see inside of here, we have that scene. We can hit play and we can actually watch it happen. We can watch these two emitters come out and again, flow into the cup and blend, which is great. There they come. You can see how it's built. You have all the options here. You see there's four different emitters. There is the particle liquify. There's the blend color and then the two datas for those colors, right? Basically. Uh, and then this is where I learned something pretty interesting. You can see like val the cool thing about like when you download stuff like this is that you get access to their values and things. So, you know, first off, let's just take a look real quick and you can see how it's cool because this volume mesher, you can see the particles in there, but the volume liquid mesh is actually connecting here and blending right off the bat, which is really nice. So we can, you know, increase that and that'll smooth that out some as well. And like that. Increase the steps for more accuracy. There we go. And then we can smooth the normals out. So we can get a little more detail out of it, but it also looks kind of chunky. So it's all a balancing act. So you can actually control like the droplets and kind of control whether those splash out or whatever. And it's all going to be you know, built on top of this and how it works and all this stuff, um, which is nice, right? So you have all this, this nice system, but it's just another system to figure out. But here's the thing that bothers me about the system. Okay, this is a really cool example. Like I would love this as a starter scene, replace my own glass, boom, I've got something good to go. The problem is if I want to replace my own glass, beer can, boom. My beer can is, my beer bottle is, is absolutely tiny. Again, these are huge and again, they don't look that photorealistic. And so nothing is like set up render ready, which is a bummer, but and maybe it'll get there. Maybe they'll eventually add those to there. Okay, but that is how you can get access to all these cool things. Now, here's one thing that I learned. I was trying to pour my liquid into a glass and use that as the collider. And I kept having issues where it would uh, clip through my glass. Now, what I've noticed they have is they have a glass collider. And if we turn that on, it is stretched out extra to keep things from spilling over the side and keep them from clipping through by making it thicker. And then it's just turned off so it's not visible. So it's using those properties to basically work better than your actual mesh. So you may not even, rather than using their actual mesh as the glass, which if we do that here, maybe we can see what happens. Let's go ahead and take our emitters and just cut this number down by like 10,000, okay. And we'll see what happens when we add it into just the glass without the collider um, cushion that they created. Because I'm wondering if it's going to be the same thing that happened to mine, which is where I was kind of clipping through and getting stuck in between that little volume of the glass. So I'm curious. But yeah, it's tricks like that. And you can see like, you can see how the particles do look liquidy, right? Like it's there. They're looking good. It's, it's actually surprisingly well. Um, it's not bad. This actually seems to be working fine. I guess they had issues. Maybe it's when it gets down and they start stirring it that they, they run into some issues. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, that's right click, go to show help, and that will pop up the help option here. And inside of here, you can look for that icon and download those scenes. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, five scenes. I downloaded one twice, I think. Maybe, yeah. But yeah. Like it surprisingly looks good. It looks better than I thought. And it's a really good first installment. 
Um, I wish they gave this scene, but this is viscosity, obviously, so you can see that. Which looks great, like that looks good, this looks great. This looks good. Higher particles, low viscosity values. Simulation behaves like water. Thicker things with this higher viscosity can use lower particles, right? Like jelly. <laughs> whatever whatever we want to pretend that is. It's uh, brown enough. But the fact that it can blend here and fill up is, is so good. This is something that I was not expecting it to work with, and it does. And somebody asked um, in the viewport if you could blend two colors together, and you totally can. Um, I know in, in the Maxon training video, so yes, you can. And there's even a sample file that does it. So, cool. So yeah, again, things that I've discovered that I think will be helpful. You know, check with size. Make sure that in your control D that your liquid default radius is the size you want when you're using that. Make sure that's smaller if you need things to be smaller, okay? On top of that, I would say when you're using your emitter, do not use uh, per frame. When you use per frame, it just breaks it. It does not work right. Even if you do the math and, and sample it down right so it's exactly the same amount of particles, it needs to be per second on constant or else it just doesn't work right with water. It just doesn't know how to do it because per frame like does like shot, 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 shots. But uh, yeah, it just doesn't work right. And then lastly, on top of that, um, the liquid mesh. Again, I think this is going to be one of those features where this is the, this is going to be the secret sauce to making it look good. I think everyone will kind of be able to figure out the emitter settings and liquify settings. I think you know people will be able to figure out density, viscosity, things like that that look pretty good. But I think the challenging the challenge of this is going to be within the scale and the liquid mesh, right? I think this is going to be where the trouble point and the trouble points are. But yeah. Um, Overall, that's pretty cool though, right? So yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. I'll definitely make some more, um, but let me know. Definitely, uh, so I want to say definitely check out my Gumroad and stuff. There will actually be a sale coming soon because I need money for my new uh, computer. So I'm going to do a sale. I'm going to try to do 30%, 30.9% off with the code uh, for my 3090 dime. <laughs> we'll see if I can do that, but we'll do something like that. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, again, this has hopefully been helpful to help you kind of figure out and learn into liquid. And then we'll do some like for real examples later on. Let me know what you guys want to see.